today. I'm so happy that you have joined us from all over the world. We have brothers and sisters who have joined us from Asia, Africa, Europe here in North America, Central America, South America, uh, and the islands of the sea. We appreciate you. And even from time to time, Australia. We are so grateful that brothers and sisters can join us as we worship the Lord, as we preach the gospel, as we demonstrate our unity, not only here in the earth, but to the heavens. I would like to read uh, the Psalm 150 as we start today, and then our praise and worship is going to begin. We want you to join us for that. The psalmist says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us stand and praise the Lord together. Oh Lord, we praise you, we bless your name, and we pray, come and meet us in this place. Lord, we know you dwell within us, but may your presence come and meet us here in this place. As we exalt and extol and lift up the name of Jesus Christ, for he alone is worthy. Oh 
finds us right where we are and brings us back to you. Lord, we worship you. We bless you. Could it hurt? I don't deserve it. Still, you. 
our worship is designed to give us confidence in the Lord. And as we're singing, as we're worshiping, we are reminiscing of God's faithfulness to us. That's what I saw tonight. You can have full confidence that the Lord will never ever leave you alone. That he will never do that. He is too good to forget his faithfulness to you. I, I, I love that. He says his love is just, I think they use the word reckless to sort of demonstrate that he wasn't thinking about himself. I mean, that's how you can accept that. He wasn't thinking about himself when he came to rescue us. And he did. He tore down not only every individual lie about us, but every corporate lie about humanity. That's what he did. And there was a middle wall of separation between us. There was a middle wall of separation between Jew and Gentile. There was no way we could get to the other side and be a covenant of people of God. But what he did was, the Bible says, Paul teaches us that he removed that middle wall of partition. So Vince says he kicked it down. But, hey, but however he got it down, he got it down. And you and I now, one people with the people of God. I don't know if you know how important that is, but there was no way for us. But he made a way. The scripture says that Jesus tells us, I am the way. You know, when we talk about this way and that way, he says, no, I am the way. He is the great I am. Yes, he is the great I am. There's no problem that you and I could ever have where the I am is not the answer. He is not the solution to that. Hallelujah. He is an amazing God. We should never forget him, no matter how severe our trials are. It doesn't matter how much doubt we feel. It doesn't matter how much turmoil uh, our nation is in. It doesn't matter. I said it doesn't matter. Because he is the great I am. No, he is the great I am. He is the, the solution. He is the supply. He is the source. Wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to pray just now for, for all the uh, needs that we have here. But I wanted to read a scripture, that one of my favorite scriptures, in uh, Matthew chapter 8, beginning in verse 14. When uh, Jesus went into the house, Peter's mother-in-law was very sick. And the scripture says, now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her. Then she arose and served them. I, I, before I go further, I remember years ago when uh, we were just young men of God, like these young men here. We were ministering in, in uh, Zimbabwe. And we went into a house where this woman, uh, the lady of the house, was very sick with a fever. It's not just a little t a, a temperature, but very sick with a debilitating fever. And I remember these words, and, and on more than one occasion, I've used this scripture. And so I just said, God, I, I don't know how to pray, not as I ought to, but I'm going to do what you did, Jesus. I will touch her hand in Jesus' name. And she rose up totally healed and served us just like Peter's mother-in-law did. This is an amazing story. And so when you don't know what to do, just do what Jesus did. Do what D Jesus did. And, and that was another story. Maybe I won't read the rest of this, all of it, but there was another story. I was summoned on a Friday night to go pray for somebody. And I went to pray for this young man. There were members of our church. The, the wife was and the mother-in-law uh, was and, and the father-in-law. And uh, we, I got to, I said, Lord, oh, no way. I said, I don't know what you're going to do for him. What are you going to do for this guy? He's very sick. He's been sick all a week with a severe fever, and he's not getting better. What are you going to do? He says, I am going to save him and raise him up. And I thought, well, what does that mean? It was almost like Greek to me. But when I got to the house, I looked at him, and he was so sick. And I said, Lord, I don't know what to do, but I'm going to do the same thing that you did to Peter's mother-in-law. 
when she had the fever. I will touch his hand. And I, I touched his hand and said, in the name of Jesus. And he began to mumble some unintelligible words to me. But the Holy Spirit came upon him. And he got out of his bed, totally healed, and had been sick. So God is an amazing God. He's an amazing God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let us believe the Lord Jesus when we pray. My mom used to say, when, whenever we pray, God will have his way. And that's what we want to do. We want to pray like people who believe in the Lord. Amen. 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 Well, the, the Bible says that what happened later on that day, Peter's mother-in-law got, got up and she served them. She took care of them. She was totally healed, totally well. But when evening came, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. So Jesus Christ took your physical infirmities and he took your spiritual infirmities. He took your sin that you could never get rid of on your own and he took it upon himself. I like to think of him just taking our sin and just sucking it up like poison. And it did not d destroy him, but he sucked it up and it went away. And now you and I are free from sin, free from shame. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Isn't Jesus wonderful? He is wonderful. Jesus, there's nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Therefore, therefore, we pray for all who are in this building. Lord, whatever they're going through, we declare they will go through it. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord God, for their children and their children's children. We pray for their mothers and fathers. We pray for their sisters and brothers. We for, pray for their relatives, just as Cornelius brought even his relatives and good friends under the, his canopy. And we pray that, Lord, that many would come under this canopy and be totally healed. In the name of the Lord, we pray for the good family, Lord, and, and the passing of Vanessa's grandpa. We just ask that the power of the Holy Spirit would minister to that family, blessing that family, healing them and strengthening Vanessa. In the name of Jesus, we pray for this Sparsa family in, in the passing of Rudy's grandmother. In the name of the Lord, Lord, heal their heart, their broken heart in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And we thank you for healing Deb in her lower back and giving the doctors wisdom. In all things, we thank you. We pray against cancer, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray against cancer. In the name of Jesus. Lord, when anyone in, under this banner uh, gets a, a, a diagnosis of cancer, let them say, I will not be afraid in the name of the Lord. So we pray against it because, Lord God, it has a name, and your name is greater than every name. So we thank you for those. We thank you for Luis. We thank you for Sandra. We thank you for Charles, Terry. And we thank you for all the others in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray for Ryan, Lord. Um, we pray um, who has been cleared to return home. We pray for, yes, him overseas. We pray that you would bring him home and that all things will be well. We pray, Lord God, for the Molina, Molina family, four sisters, Lord. We pray for uh, them, their brother passed away. And we thank you, Lord, from COVID. And we thank you that his daughter, uh, will be healed from and two sons from COVID as well in the name of the Lord God We come against these this dreaded pandemic this scourge and we say Lord God as others have said We're not afraid of this scourge and we rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Raise us up. We pray we pray for our, our Filipino brothers and sisters We pray for them as they recover from this the fifth fifth typhoon they've had this year we pray against those typhoons that are coming in there and lord god we just say with our brothers and sisters in the philippines that that they, those typhoons cannot come here they may go there wherever there is but they cannot come here i pray that you would give them faith lord as we join them that those typhoons cannot come here i pray for our brothers and sisters in vietnam that they too would say you cannot come here you may go there wherever there is, Lord, out the sea, that it might dissipate there. 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray that you would raise them up, Lord, that there would be men and women of faith, of true faith in Jesus Christ. We pray against the stroke of Debbie, that Debbie, I'm sorry, that Shirley's having, that had rather. We pray against that stroke in Jesus' name. We pray for all who are uh, victims of COVID-19. We pray against the, its spiking in Corpus Christi as it has in, in, in around Texas and in El Paso. Lord God, we just pray, Lord God, that it would not uh, continue in El Paso at this devastating rate in the name of Jesus Christ. And this thing that is spiked all over our nation, we pray, Lord, that, 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 uh, that it would be mitigated by prayer and, and uh, good conduct as well. Lord God, may we have good conduct and, and carry ourselves well and not be bullies, bullying COVID-19. Lord God, uh, faceless and not wearing masks, trying to prove that it's nothing. Let us not be presumptuous. Faith is not presumption. Lord God, we thank you in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord God, for all, all of the families who've lost loved ones due to this scourge, that you would heal them, raise them up. I pray, Lord God, that this thing will soon be taken care of in our nation and we can go back, Lord God, not to complacency, but to a more normal life, thanking you for what you have done for us during this scourge, for we have been behind the door, as it were, protected by you, like the Israelites were when the death, when the death angel was riding through the, the country. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, as we also ask you to stand strongly with us in our nation as we are on very shaky ground, uh, stuff that we have not experienced before. We don't panic, Lord, but we just ask that we not go the way of some nations who, who have gone so far astray. I pray, Lord God, that, that everything would be, be calm in the White House, in the, in the Senate, in the, the House, the Supreme Court, and all through the nation. I pray that, that men and women who don't know what they're doing or thinking about will not take up arms, uh, as it were, would not be stoked, by, the fires would not be stoked, and they would not uh, be inflamed, and incendiary speech would not be spoken. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. But most of all, I pray that the church would be about its business of advancing the kingdom rather than the kingdoms of men. I pray this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to have a reading by our sister, Jadira. Trust in the Lord not in yourself yes we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God who raises the dead this dramatic statement by the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul has given me a much needed explanation of my life's journey and the strength to continue it with hope and spiritual vigor not trusting in ourselves is a major hurdle we all must face and overcome. Generally, we face our hurdles without recognizing that they are not our real problem. Often, we look at difficulties as the devil coming against us. Therefore, we pray and pray, believing that the Lord will remove our impediments without realizing that they are designed to destroy self-trust. Trusting in ourselves is our real hurdle. Self-trust is a weapon that the enemy often uses to defeat us. Paul says that the sentence of death in ourselves is God ordained. That we should not trust in ourselves, but in the ever-present, all-knowing, and all-powerful God. The scriptures say, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. 
These scriptures tell us how to be victorious in all situations and circumstances. We are to trust the Lord with all our heart and not be wise in our own eyes. We must not lean on our own understanding or trust in our natural wisdom because our understanding and wisdom are inadequate and limited. Jesus is the wisdom of God. Let's practice leaning on and acknowledging him in everything we do. This is his road to success. The promise is that he will direct our paths. We are designed by God to live in total dependence upon him. It was Adam's independence that caused our problems. Disobedience says, I'm my own person. It is an expression of self-trust and not trust in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord means obeying Him and depending on Him even when you don't understand. Let us thank the Lord in all our trials because He is bringing us to the end of ourselves. When we no longer have self to depend on, we will have learned to depend upon and trust Jesus our Lord. Be blessed, Pastor Don. Wow. I mean, if, if you're not moved, I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you so much, Sister Jadida. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. Wow. How do you, how do you, how do you go from there? Thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you again. Wow. Listen, um, uh, do we have any first-time guests today? If you're here for the first time. Would you mind raising your hand if you're here for the first time? Oh, wow. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very, very much for joining us. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, thank you so much. We, we give that, that card because we'll just somebody will call you and say, thank you so much for coming. And if you don't mind filling that out, we want to give you each a gift from us. And we thank you so much for having come to our service tonight. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. But well, why don't we stand and, and wave at somebody. Wave at, say, wave at the person you came with so they don't, they'll know you love them. And then wave at somebody else. Yes, wave at someone else, all right? Yeah, come on, wave at them, wave at them. Come on, wave at them. Hey, come on, like you mean it, right? Come on. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good, that's good. That's good, you did well. Thank you so much. You did so well. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, let me make an announcement. Um, uh, we're going to have James uh, Dolan, Sister Debbie Pettis's son, memorial here Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, Debbie, wave at me. Mark, wave at me over there. And uh, that's uh, their son, James, who passed away um, several weeks ago. And uh, you, were, you were made known... Uh, about that. It was made known to you, rather. But, and uh, so we're going to have his memorial here Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Also, um, uh, after the service this evening, uh, we're going to do it very quickly. I want to give you a little bit of report from uh, Pastor Elona Proy uh, from Albania. I want to do that. It'll be very succinct, and I want to sh share with you some things that, uh, about her and, and that ministry. Okay, and uh, by reason of strength, we'll talk to you a little bit also about another ministry that I want to talk about. We will do that after we have said goodbye and the live streaming is off, okay? I'll do that. So it's time to give. All right, so it's time to give. And uh, we here at the fellowship, we have three ways to give, three ways to give. And you can give by cash, by envelope, by check. I think I did that right. And you can give online by going to cccfellowship.com forward slash give. And, uh, and uh, you can give there. Now, if you're a millennial, you'll probably like to text. So you can text at 361-386-2565. That is 361-386-2565. And you can also text K 
key, the word keywords, all right? Text the word keywords for giving options, all right? Text keywords for giving options. Do you, if you need an offering envelope, just raise your hand and the ushers will give you one uh, quickly, expeditiously. I'm, I'm going to uh, pray just momentarily, but then the next voice you will hear will be our speaker. I have purpose to ask some of our speakers, recent speakers, to speak again, especially those who were not able to finish their messages. And so I wanted them to speak again and give us some of those pertinent parts. My pastor used to say to us that everything else we do is fine in the church, but it is the Word of God that keeps you. It is the Word of God that keeps you. He said everything else is wonderful, but the Word of God will keep you. And I would love for us to continue being people of the Word, people of the Word of God, loving the Word of God. I've heard a lot of believers say things like, well, I like this part of the service. Well, I like that part of the service. I'm thinking, that's why you're weak. You don't eat enough Word. Yeah. So it is the Word of God that keeps us. All right? So let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you for your goodness. We thank you for this wonderful people. We thank you for their dedication to you. <clears throat> I pray that they would continue to keep their eyes on you, Jesus, that they would n never, ever lean on their own understanding. But in all their ways, they would acknowledge you, and you will always direct their paths. I pray this in the name of the Lord, that you would keep them in this hour of trial that is coming upon the whole world. I pray you would keep them, keep them in perfect peace because their mind is stayed on you. Through Jesus Christ, Father, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Sister Amy. You do a superb job. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very, very much. I would like to just say our speaker is Brother Elliot Lavelle, one of our elders here at the fellowship. Come on, Brother Elliot. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, God is good. And I want to thank the Lord for this awesome opportunity to stand before you tonight. Um, Pastor Don uh, asked me if I would uh, finish my message since uh, I did kind of cut it short the last time that we spoke. So um, we will be reviewing some things uh, that uh, I shared the last time. And also there will be some new things uh, that we'll be going over and the things that, that we didn't talk about uh, last time. And, and I am a fan of the KJV. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'll tell you, my, 
my mother and my dad used KJV, and they quoted the scriptures to me in KJV, and so I know KJV. <laughs> hey, praise the Lord. I first want to give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of my life and the light of my life. And I want to say Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. And I want to give honor to uh, uh, Pastor Don and Sister Marva for 34 years of ministry. Walking Christians through the valley of the shadow of death. And I was thinking about Pastor Don today, and I was thinking, wow, it's just amazing to have him as our pastor and how he comforts others and holds uh, people by the hand as they walk through difficulty. And it's a great thing to have a pastor, to have a shepherd. Amen? Amen. Uh, this message is intended to reveal Jesus Christ, to make him known. In the Old Testament, uh, Jesus Christ is concealed. And in the New Testament, he is revealed and being revealed. And we pray that he be revealed in us. Amen? Amen. When Moses built the tabernacle in the wilderness, you know, he was behind the veil. And uh, so he was concealed. So we pray that night that the Lord would illuminate these things for us and uh, help us to be able to uh, go through them and reveal Jesus Christ and make him known. Um, there's two takeaways that I want you to take away. Sometimes when you're going through a message like this, uh, you know, people get lost or, or they don't understand what you're saying. But I want to give you the takeaway in the beginning. And that way, you, you know where we went. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And the title of the message is The Lordship of Jesus Christ. This is part two. And the takeaway is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yeah. And the other takeaway is Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Yeah. We must have Christ in us. Amen? So the first scripture in uh, Luke 10, 22, it says, All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal. So there's a dynamic going on between the Son and the Father. The Father reveals the Son... And the Son reveals the Father. When Jesus came, he made known the will of the Father. On the cross, he tells the Father, now glorify the Son. So there's this dynamic going on. The Father revealing the Son and the Son revealing the Father. We're sons of God. Now it's incumbent upon us to reveal our Heavenly Father. Because we are his sons. We have received the Lord Jesus Christ. We have believed on his name. So our testimony should be revealing our Heavenly Father. There's a, uh, the, the, there's a scripture in 2 Corinthians 4, 6. And this is one, becoming one of my new favorite scriptures. Uh, it says, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is a great revelation, church. This is a great revelation that the Apostle Paul gives us because this reveals Genesis 1.1. It reveals God's intentions from the very beginning. Because in my KJV, it says, uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was dark and without form and void. And the Spirit moved over the waters and said, let there be light. 
I didn't get, he commanded the light to shine out of darkness into our hearts. In that Jesus Christ is, the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ is foundational. You're not going to uh, walk in the light until you have the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. It's in the foundation. So if you plan on getting light from any place, you have to get it from here. There's no other source. God has already commanded it. So let us focus on Jesus Christ tonight and not on ourselves. And not on our situations. From the very beginning, the Father speaks of his Son. And we should also. From Genesis to Revelation. In Genesis, I just read to you. Him talking about his son in Genesis 1.1. From the very, very, very beginning. In Exodus 4.22, it says, And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son and even thy firstborn. Okay. Pharaoh saw a bunch of slaves. God saw his son. Amen. In the church today, who do you see? Do you see God's white sons? You see his black sons? Do you see his Asian sons? Do you see his rich sons? Or do you see his son? We're going to have to get it right, church. We're going to have to see it the way the Lord sees it. He sees his son. And it's incumbent upon us to start looking for the son of God. And... In Revelation uh, 12, 1 and 2, God tells the story of his son in the stars, the birth of his son. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child, cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. This Romans tells us that the whole creation is groaning, travailing in pain, waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God. God tells us in a variety of ways about his son. Jesus Christ is Lord. And we're going to say that often in this message. And at every opportunity, we're going to proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. To call Jesus Lord, there is an implied obedience. He is Lord requires your obedience. Only those that know him, only those who obey him, know him as Lord. And the scripture says, no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. So we have to have Christ in us, church, to be able to say Jesus is Lord. Amen. We have to have the Holy Spirit to say Jesus is Lord. We have to seek the Holy Spirit. We have to, we have to receive him. Amen? Amen? And this is one thing that I have found in my life, and that is, is that we don't obey what we don't love. And so we have to love the Father. But we have a little problem here. It's called the flesh. The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. That is the first commandment. Now, as Pastor Bird would say, this is a school zone. 
So we're called to love him with all of our hearts, all of our souls, all of our minds, and strength. Now, we all grew up in a system of grading, and we're used to being graded on a curve. The word 99 can be 100. 95 can be 100. 90 can be 100. I've seen some classes where 80 could be 100, depending on how bad the class did. But in God's system, in God's economy, all means all. There's no curve. God's standard is high. He holds the bar high. He keeps the bar high. There's no, oh, Lord, I'm frail. No. His standard is high. But the Lord has made a way. The, the title of this message is the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He has made a way. Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, Christ in you enables us to fulfill this scripture. Because Jesus, he left it all on the field. He became a burnt offering. And you have to qualify. Leviticus tells you that in order to qualify to be a burnt offering, you got to be in the fire all night long. That means that you're going to be totally cooked. You're going to be totally consumed. And we know that Jesus was in the fire all night long. Why? Because the rooster told us. You know, a rooster crows in the morning, right? He crowed three times. We've always used that scripture, you know, to show how Peter denied Jesus three times. But the rooster was telling us something else. He was telling us it was morning. Jesus had been in the fire with wicked men all night long. So, so Jesus left it all on the field. Anytime an athlete comes and tells you, oh, I left it all on the field, ask him one question. Did he walk off? If he walked off, he didn't leave it all on the field. They carried Jesus off the field. He was totally consumed. So, now, all means a different thing to us now. We understand that Christ in you, the hope of glory. Because now we have Christ in us who gave it all. He left it all on the field. Now, he fulfills this scripture of the first commandment, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> in other words it takes God to love God Amen. we're coming the position that we're coming from a six day man incomplete you can't get there unless you have Christ in you the hope of glory Amen. because there's just a big incomplete on us because we're created in six days six is not a completion number Amen? Now, last time uh, uh, I went through and defined Jesus and Christ and Lord. I'm just going to skip through it a little bit and just go real fast. You know, in other words, it's just in case someone is here that wasn't here last time, and that Jesus means he saves. The scripture says his name shall be called Jesus because he shall save his people from their sins. Amen. And God is, or, or it means God is salvation. Christ comes from the Greek word uh, Christos, which means anointed one. The, our Heavenly Father anointed Jesus by sending the Holy Ghost. And, he's a, and he anointed him. Now Jesus is the anointed Son of God. And, 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 and it's in the record, because John bore record, in that the, the scripture tells him that um, the one who he see the spirit descending and remaining, that one is the son of God. Amen. So he is the anointed son of God. Amen. And Lord means all power. Ownership. So when you say Jesus Christ is Lord, you're saying something. You're saying he saves. The anointed son of God saves with power. 
and you're saying he owns me. Now, this is the thing. A lot of people don't like that because it has a kind of like a slave connotation to it. But listen, this is the thing. There ain't but two choices. <laughs> Either Jesus is your master or the devil's your master. That's, that's just the bottom line. There's no door number three. There's no door number three. Either Jesus is Lord or the devil is your Lord. Amen. Now, I, I'm just telling you. Anyway, the, you know, in Psalms 24, 1 through 2, the, the scripture says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. He's the owner. He owns us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So anyway, this is the foundational scripture, and uh, I kind of put them towards the end uh, because I want you to remember them. If I put them in the very beginning, by the time I get to the end, you may not remember. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So it's very good to, uh, for you to remember the word. Now, I'm going to tell you, um, anybody ever remember um, any, anything that a substitute teacher told you that you remember? Listen, I'm, I'm a substitute teacher. But this is the thing. I always learn to say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Don't discount people. Remember? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and Pastor Don, is, I know he has spoiled y'all. He has spoiled you. He's, he, he's my preacher, my pastor. I'd rather listen to him than to listen to the, anybody else. So he spoiled us, and I know how that is. Praise the Lord. Anyway, in Philippians, the second chapter, verses 5 through 11, uh, verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Remember that. Let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He says, But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Took upon him the form of a servant. He said, Let this mind be in you. He took up on him the form of a servant. Do we want to go out, graduate to the Lord before we become a servant? He says, he says he took up on him the form of a servant. So let's come down off that high horse. And was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself. This is our pattern. This is the pattern, son. He humbled himself. Church, sometimes we get to, we're taking ourselves too serious. Remember, we've been translated into the kingdom of God. We're sons of God now. Amen. Listen, our behavior reflects the image of God. Yes, sir. You know, we, we can't, we can't uh, uh, keep acting like that six-day man. Knows no restraint. And he says, he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Amen. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. And to every tongue and that every tongue should confess. Let's get your practice on. Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is why you're saying Jesus Christ is Lord, because it's to the glory of God, Amen. the Father. Amen. When Jesus was on the cross, he says, now glorify the Son. Amen. This is our job in the kingdom. And so last time we talked about his conception and that he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Uh, we talked about his birth and how kings uh, came to worship him at his birth. Kings from the east. So that makes him king of kings. We talked about his righteousness in that his righteousness from his earthly side was established over 42 generations. How many generations of righteousness can you go back in your family? 42 generations of righteousness is perfection. So he's been established upon 42 generations of righteousness. And we talked about his first miracle 
and how he turned the water into wine. And uh, his mother said, what so, whatever he says, do it, told the servants. And, and I always think, you know, the, you know uh, when the scripture says she told the servants, I feel like she's talking to us. Whatever he says, do it. And also, this is the last word that we hear from Mary in the Bible. This is her last appearance. Her last opportunity to, uh, to bless us with a good word. He says, whatever he says, do it. Obey whatever he says. Now, remember, the message is the Lordship of Jesus Christ. This is the record that every believer should know. And I'm going to skip over a bunch of these because I covered them last time, and I'm going to go to the second half. It says, To whom God make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is the mystery. That God would make known the uh, what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Remember the indictment against men? Remember what it says? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory. God has made a way. Christ in you now. It's not about you trying to do better. God is not trying to jack up the old man and fix him up, brush him off, dust him up, and say, you can do better. No, that's that. We talk. We, we talk about new creation. Amen. All of us understand. When you're in a condemned building, get out. Yeah. Get out. Listen, the old man. It's been it's been condemned. We're gonna have to come. We got to move on over into a new man. Okay. All right. So, uh, in this, this scripture here says, in, in all wisdom, present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That's just another way to say Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. It says, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That's, a, that's just another way to say Christ in you, the hope of glory. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Dwell all the fullness. In him dwells all the fullness. Christ in you, the hope of glory. He says, ye are complete in him. Complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision uh, uh, made without hands, putting off of the body of sins, of, putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. That means that you're, you're consecrated to Christ. And that you're, in, 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 I'm going to go on. And buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And that baptism joins you with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection, and newness of life. He says, and you being dead in your sins and, and, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he hath quickened, which means he has given you life. He's blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, in that he blotted out all of the ordinances that was against us. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. In other words, he made a show of all the principalities and powers. The scripture says that there is no counsel against the Lord. So anytime you in, you in, in with a group and, and, their, and their counsel is against the Lord, get out. Get out. There's no counsel against the Lord. There is no counsel against the Lord. And it says, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. And that's what we have to get to. We have to get to the new man. We are a new creation in Christ. Where old things are passed away and all things are become new. Amen? Amen. Now, King David, he encourages in Psalms 103. In our pursuit of the Lord, he tells us to bless the Lord. 
a lot of times, you know, we're in this mode where, bless me. Bless me. The Lord has done great things. Let us learn to bless him. I, I think we'll get more, of our, more out of our prayers when we learn to bless him. Amen. Amen. Bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. I, you know, I get tired of saying that, you know, when I'm praying. That's like, Lord, I'm tired of saying that. You know, bless me. Bless you. You've done all the work. So anyway, Psalms 103, I'm going to read 1 through 12. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor, record, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so hath he removed our transgressions from us. Amen. And I want to tell you this right quick. In that Jesus carried our sins and our transgressions. You know, there's a street in the old city. It's called Via Dolorosa. Yeah. The way of suffering. He carried our transgressions and our sins all the way to Calvary. And when Jesus was on the cross, facing the south, towards Jerusalem, and you say, might want to say, well, how do you know he's facing south? Because Jesus would never turn his back on Jerusalem. And we know he talked to Moses face to face. Right? So he's facing, he's facing Jerusalem. And we know that his enemies are behind him. His right hand is pointing west. His left hand is pointing east. Casting our sins and transgressions as far as the east is from the west. All by himself. So in, in concluding, Philippians 9, 10, 11. Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, Jesus is Lord. Yes, Jesus is Lord. Brother Elliot, I want to thank you for a great message. It's a great message. Thank you. A great message. grateful to God that I know how to soak it up. Yeah, do you know how to soak it up? Thank you so very much. Many things to think about and to think about it in a new way. And Lord, I'm grateful. Perhaps there's somebody here and you've heard the word of God tonight and you think, wow, I, 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 need, I need the Lord. I need Jesus Christ. And if that is you here today, you want Jesus Christ. You, you've never ever given yourself to Jesus. You can do it today. Now, if you have given yourself and you want to recommit, you can do that today as well. But I would like to see your hand if you would say, I want to give myself to Jesus Christ tonight. I'm going to give myself. I'm coming to Jesus. I'm asking him to, to come into my heart and be my life. Is, is that you tonight? Is that you tonight? Perhaps there's somebody on, online. and you, I can't see you, but God sees you. And you want to say, Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart and become my life. I don't say come into my life because my life is messed up. I want you to come into my heart and bring your life. And I want to be animated by your life. And that's what you can do tonight if you were to say that. The scripture tells us that if we would uh, confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from some unrighteousness no all unrighteousness so god will do that also pa paul tells us in romans that if we confess our sins um that if we would confess with our mouth the lord jesus rather and believe in our heart that god has raised him from the dead we will be saved he doesn't say you perhaps you will be but you will be saved now the kjv that my brother was talking about there you shall be saved right no wiggle room no wiggle room so if you've prayed that tonight then you are saved and that means that god will keep you through jesus christ jesus says that all the father has given him he had kept he had preserved that means with all the power of rome coming against him all the power of israel the jewish nation the sanhedrin coming against him all the power of herod coming against him all the power of darkness coming against him he said i lost nobody singularly one man i lost nobody wow thank you jesus jesus will not lose you and nor will he lose any of you amen thank you now what i'm going to do i want to remind you that we're going to give the blessing and then i'd like for you to just remain seated just for a few minutes is that all right just for a few minutes uh, i want to say uh, uh, thank you so very much uh, i mean it's been a wonderful time brother, brother vince thank you so much i sure like that uh, that there's no wall he won't kick down what is what else is that lie he won't tear down is there another one no shadow he won't light up come on come on you know look at that just look around somebody has been living in the shadows you know that you have lived in the shadows and he, he lifts up that shadow and rescued you thank you so much so we're going to, to give the blessing, if you don't mind standing. And then um, uh, Brother Vince is going to give us another little uh, verse or two of that, and then I'll come back. Let's lift our hands to the Lord and bless each other. And do a 360, would you? Uh, and bless everybody.
Repeat after me. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord give you his peace. In Jesus' name, I bless you. I bless you. Yeah.